Well, tonight, President Biden gets a pretty big win from, well, an unlikely source, as the Supreme Court is breathing new life into his restrictions on ghost guns or homemade firearms that cannot be tracked. Conservative Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Amy Coney Barrett joining with the court's liberals in the 5-4 to four decision. Ghost guns can be assembled with at-home kits, and critics argue that their lack of a serial number and, of course, background checks make them attractive to people who are legally prohibited from even owning a weapon. The rules will remain in place while more challenges play out, and you can bet they will. As political headlines, of course, are dominating the message from the nation's capital, the city's leaders are now sounding the alarm over a much different crisis on the streets. Violent crime jumped 37 percent from last year, according to the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department. Homicide is up 28 percent, with robbery up an alarming, get this, 60 percent. Now a city council member is calling for the National Guard to help restore order. We are in a war zone. And those who have not been affected by it directly, you will be directly or indirectly if we don't do something now. Bad things happen when good people do nothing. And we have a lot of great residents in our community wanting to do something. But our government has to step up, our police department has to step up, and our residents have to step up. That was DC Council Member Trayon, Mar Trayon White, excuse me, Trayon White, and he joins me now. Trayon White Sr., thank you so much for being here today. It's really stunning to think about what's happening and the crime rates that are rising, but you've called on even the National Guard being used to try to restore some kind of order. That can be very eyebrow-raising for a lot of people, thinking about the National Guard not really trained in, obviously, day-to-day -day law enforcement. Why is that such an important cause of action? Well, the whole approach is, uh, is a public health approach to addressing public safety in our community, meaning we should have uh, trauma-informed care, access to recreation, uh, mentors, uh, just the things that residents need in addition to responsible policing. I think that uh, we are in a crisis when it comes to uh, the violence in D.C. We've had, what, 596 carjackings. We've had over 1,700 people shot in the district in the last three years. Um, and what we're doing is simply not enough to make people feel and be safe in a district. Um, and we're looking to have the conversation with a new police chief. In fact, we're on our third police chief since mm -hmm. 2020, uh, and the mayor to figure out ways we can be more proactive about addressing crime in the District of Columbia, including uh, and, and f reaching out to our local uh, National Guard to get involved. And that's an issue also because D.C. is the only jurisdiction that the governor or mayor doesn't invoke the National Guard. And I think that speaks to the issue of statehood as well. I mean, the issue of statehood, one very complex, one that is um, constantly being revisited. Anyone who drives through D.C. sees the license plate, right? Yep. Represent taxation or representation, which is obviously the antithesis of what we want to happen. But, you know, obviously you want a holistic approach, as any community would, in terms of addressing what might be some of the root causes of people committing crimes. But the law enforcement component of it, obviously, is going to be very impactful. And if you've got the National Guard, you're not trained to be the ordinary course of law enforcement, not trained in those ways. Do you have concerns about what their presence would be and the way they would help to carry out whatever objective? Yes, we do have concer concerns. You asked me what are the root causes. Some of the root causes is concentrated poverty. Right, uh, we are in also in D.C. in a housing crisis. Where mostly black residents are trying to stay in the city, where we lost over 20,000 black residents in the last 10 years, and the price of living is going up and up, where the wages are not. And so we have to create uh, access to quality uh, jobs and careers, also access to capital for business owners. Um, we are concerned about the presence of a militarized mm -hmm. uh, presence in D.C. That's why we want to work with our local partners and our police department to work through what that looks like, what that look like, and I've spoken to one of the lieutenants at the D.C. National Guard to try to figure out if they are invoked, what, what that would look like. And, and what they say? Back. Well, they said they would need to know what they would be deployed to do, um, uh, what their relationship with the NPD would look like, and how long they would stay. Uh, and I think, uh, as I read their mission, their mission is to keep D.C. safe. And I think that they are an entity which we can get in and out and have some type of leverage with them being local. Uh, while, because the reality is that a lot of our shootings are happening with militarized weapons. I've seen a video of, on Chesapeake Street last week where uh, 
a guy with an AK-47 shoots down the street and shoots two people, two guys. Uh, even while I was in the, the, the waiting room tonight, uh, we had a shooting on 30th Street uh, just a week and a half ago on that same exact street. We've had six shootings in the last 45 days. And last week, a 10-year-old girl was shot while sitting in her bedroom on the exact same street. And uh, our law enforcement are losing officers every day. In fact, the last police chief told us that once we are able to upload the 300 officers that are getting trained now, mm -hmm. we essentially lose about 350 officers in that process. And so it, even in my, in my war, we are uh, 33 officers short of what we normally have in our, in our, in our local jurisdiction. And so you we, think that the presence of um maybe a military-trained National Guard would be more effective than a local law enforcement... Well, well, I wouldn't entity. say more effective. I think that we don't have the manpower to cover the areas in, in hot spots in D.C. And as a result, we're seeing shootings over and over again in the same areas. In fact, this Saturday, uh, we had a shooting that uh, at least seven people were shot in, in an area. Unbelievable. Um, and just... if you look at the data, it was shootings two days before that. And yesterday morning, it was another shooting there at 16th and V just yesterday. It's mind-boggling to think of just the number and the pre pre um, prevalence of all this. I, I wonder what you made of the former president who was just here last week. He made comments about how he thought that the city was in a decline. He commented about it being filthy, about broken buildings, about crime. Um, are you concerned that the, the impression that he had, one, is accurate or speaks to what you're talking about right now, or that it is giving an, either an accurate or unfair description of the city as it is? Well, to, to say that the city is in, the, in the decline is an overstatement. The city is not in decline. We have one of the healthiest budgets we ever had in D.C. history. We have strong leadership. Uh, we have to figure out ways to invoke the, the council members, the mayor, the politicians to work with in, in conjunction with the community. Mm. And we don't have all the answers. And I believe that our answers are in the community. And we have to uh, create resources for nonprofit organizations, local partners to get involved to addressing solutions because police is not the end all solution to addressing crime. It's a part of that equation. Very important point. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you I for appreciate having me. it.